And sometimes it seems like a dream, but I know it's not a dream because um, the reality of it all is just in your face. It just made me realize how easy you can lose your life. It was in South Central LA and um, I got lost and I saw a phone booth at a liquor store, which back at that time they had phone booths on every corner that it was a liquor store. <laughs> it just so happened there was a lot of young boys out there in front of the liquor store. I'd say about seven or eight, and they were selling joints. And boys started approaching me. I'd say the youngest was probably 11, 12. The oldest might have been 16, 17. And they started approaching me with joints, trying to sell me a joint. And I was surprised to see them out that late at night, you know, and I was like, hey man, what are you guys doing out here slinging? I said, you need to be at home, uh, getting ready to go to school tomorrow, doing your homework. Where's your mama? Where's your daddy? And um, went on over to the phone booth to use the phone. A couple of them said something back, a curse or something, but I just kind of ignored them because they was kids, and I didn't think twice about it. Got on the phone, and about that time, somebody came in from behind and tripped my legs from under me. And I fell, and I knew I was being attacked. And my instinct was to get up and fight. And I jump, I jump up, get ready to defend myself, but I didn't get a chance to really jump up. So my legs got swapped from under me again, and then all these blows start just coming from nowhere, kicks and stuff. And then I knew I was being jumped. And then it seemed like it was more than seven or eight of them. It seemed like it was a whole platoon. And they were just kicking me, you know, and, and, and hitting me. And I was bleeding and crying and begging um, for them not to, you know, you know, to get off of me. And then uh, I grabbed one. And when I grabbed one, uh, um, he pulled out a gun. And then another one pulled out a gun. And when they pulled out a gun, I let him go and I cowered back down. And now that's when he stuck the gun to my head. And um, I knew, I thought he was gonna shoot me, but he didn't, and then like three or four other ones pulled guns out. And I started crying and begging them then, cause I knew I was dead. I started crying and I started begging and my whole life started flashing before my eyes, you know. I mean, it seems like a long time the way I'm telling it, but it was like only a minute or two and um, I just started praying to God to save me, get me out of this. Uh, I can't die like this. Uh, how's my family going to bury me? I just got here, uh, just going through my mind. My mom, oh, she, it's going to break her heart, you know. My dad in Texas tried to get me to stay in Texas. And just everything. And Lord, save me. Jesus, save me. And, and then I started thinking, what can I say? to get out of this. And I was like, homeboy, Jesus, homeboy. And that's how Jesus is my homeboy came about. And then I said, Jesus is my homeboy. And I said, and Jesus is your homeboy, and he's your homeboy. And I went around all of them faces, and I told them all, he's your homeboy, Jesus is your homeboy, and he's all of our homeboys. And please don't kill me. And this one kid, made eye contact with me and he looked me in the eyes and he told me he said Jesus is my homeboy too man I mean I wasn't Jesus is my home too my Jesus is my homeboy too and I was like wow he stepped back then he told the rest of them let him go and they stepped back and puzzled some and he said let him go let him go and I got up and he told me, he said, you get your ass in that red Mustang and we don't want to see you in our neighborhood no more after dark. And I was bleeding out from my head, snotty nose. I didn't care, you know. Uh, 
I thought the more bad, the bad I looked, the, they would feel more sorry for me. <laughs> but, and they let me go. And that's how Jesus, my homeboy, came about. <laughs> he saved my life. You know, just that phrase. I got in my car and I started driving down the street and I was thinking, Jesus is my homeboy. Jesus is my homeboy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I was like, I got to do something with this.